I think we can start now. Um, ja, wunderschönen guten Abend, Coaches, zu der zweiten International Coaches Clinic am heutigen Abend. Um, der uh, Gast jetzt ist Adam Harvey, DC an der Hutto High School, ebenfalls in Texas. Und Coach Harvey um, hat unter anderem für die AFCA schon gesprochen, zahlreiche Clinics auch in den letzten Monaten gehalten und ist ein wirklich herausragender Coach, der uns heute um, das Thema Teaching Different Man Techniques präsentieren wird. Das heißt, er wird so ein bisschen darüber sprechen, wie spielt man Man Coverage, welche verschiedenen Techniken gibt es, um so ein bisschen auch ein Change-Up zu geben, verschiedene Looks zu geben. Und ich bin sehr froh, dass Coach Harvey heute hier ist. So, Coach, um, it's up to you. I'm excited for your talk and my pen and papers are ready. Great. Well, thank you very much, Coach, first of all, for reaching out, um, asking me to come and share a little bit. And then uh, just for all of you that are here, um, I was just telling Coach Shaw, I, I'm really, really uh, blessed to be a part of, of the growth of the game. And, you know, it's a game that I love dearly and um, to see it grow in places like Germany. And I spoke to some coaches in Australia and, and Portugal and Brazil. Um, really, really neat. So thank you guys for being here. Um, I'm going to go ahead and preface this. Hopefully my, my internet will not act up too much on me here and we'll get through this thing. Uh, but I am showing a medium signal for some reason. And so uh, I'll apologize in advance if anything happens with that. But um, hopefully this will, this will be a good teaching point for you guys and, and make it worth your while. And then, uh, you know, as always, I want this to be extremely organic. I want you guys to ask questions. Um, Uh, please, by all means, I told Coach, you know, I won't be able to see your screen because of the way my computer is set up, but I've given him permission to cut in and, uh, and, and cut me off, you know, mid-sentence if need be, because, you know, what you guys can learn um, and the questions that you have are the ones that need to get answered. Um, and with that said, I, I don't necessarily have a presentation. I don't have, you know, a PowerPoint or anything of that nature. I just want to talk football. I um, want to talk about, you know, some man technique stuff, some things that have worked for, um, you know, for us. And then I'm actually going to pull out some film from uh, Baylor University when they played Georgia last year um, in the bowl game, the Sugar Bowl. And so we're going to watch some film from them. And then I'm going to show you guys some, some technique and some drills uh, from our own kids. Um, just had a hard time finding some, some film uh, with our stuff in running man-to-man -man coverage, but I can show you what the technique looks like at the collegiate level. And then you guys, of course, ask questions at any point during this presentation. Are we good to go with that, Coach? Yes, that's great. Wonderful, wonderful. Let me go ahead and share my screen here. Uh, I'll get on over to, to the film. Good stuff, good stuff. All right, so. So a lot of these drills that you guys are going to see <clears throat> will actually uh, translate from from man to man coverage as well as zone coverage. You know, I think one of the most important things when playing any type of coverage, especially from a press and something that we coaches need to, to really harp on with young people is patience. Right. So um, a lot of guys want to lunge across this, you know, what I call the river, this line right here, the 25 yard line in this particular picture is really a, a really big aiming point for our young men. And what they want to do is a lot of times they want to shoot their hips in towards that receiver and then they get themselves out of position right away. So what we want to teach is a pure step and we call it a pure step because it's going to be to the outside or inside, depending on leverage. Now with man to man coverage, you're always going to be a half man to a full man inside. So that step is going to normally be from the outside. Now you'll see in this picture here, we're actually working some zone concepts as well. So a lot of these pictures, a lot of these pictures are actually going to be something that you can work with both man and zone um now before i begin um you know there, there's there's what we call all of one which would be cover zero and then you have some man match principles you have cover one where you have a safety in the middle of the field closing the post and you can work your different leverages based on the type of man coverage that you're in um i'm going to look at a couple of different versions of man to man today um, so, so just so you can kind of see, well, you'll see some outside leverage and that's what we call a funnel technique where if we've got a safety in the middle of the field where we've got help, we may line up on a, on an outside leverage look and really it's still man to man, but it looks more like a zone. So that's just to kind of confuse the offense 
So you will see some pictures today that, that actually show that concept. I didn't want to confuse anybody before I get going here on, on leverage, but most of the time you're going to be half a man to a full man inside the, the receiver when you're in man-to-man -man coverage concepts. Um, so getting going here, we call this the mirror drill. So it's just a really good way of teaching those kids, again, that patience. So you'll see what we don't want to do is get anywhere close to that line of scrimmage. At the same time, I really don't want to give any ground either, right? So we don't want him to back up, right? And so we, a lot of guys call that the inch back technique, and there's nothing wrong with that technique. But the way we play defense, we want to play physical. We want to just mirror his movement. So we just get him going side by side, a little typewriter movement. And really what we're doing is staring through the core of that receiver so that we can't, again, lunge after him as well as give him any ground to make a move on us as he's releasing the run, you know, a, a route across the line of scrimmage. Um, so the next rep here, <clears throat> what we'll do is just flip it so you can see a full man inside. And his first step has to be lateral. If he steps backwards or if he steps forward, he's wrong, right? So we've got to make sure he's stepping lateral. I'm just kind of slow it down. You can see that that left foot, that tap of the toe is something that, that is really, really big in that man-to-man -man coverage. We want to step with that inside foot and then get the other foot hot immediately so that they're ready to roll and ready to throw his hands. That's another thing I want to point out right now. So it starts with the feet, right? Anytime you're teaching any type of coverage, you got to work from the ground up. And so as he works his feet, he always needs his hands in the holster is what we call this, right? So hands ready to strike, all right? So in man coverage, you're always going to shoot that inside hand. As he shoots that inside hand, a lot of kids in America anyway, they try to get up here high on the shoulders. We're really going to teach to get low on the hip. If they can get low on the hip, we feel like that they can easily drive that receiver where they want him to go rather than coming up here in the shoulder area where you can get shaken, right? So if you're shaking, you know, with a head shake or, or, or a head fake one way and your shoulders are moving with it, we feel like that hip is going to be more of a point of interest and a, and a point where we can drive that receiver where we want him to go. So just little things, again, you're going to work from the ground up, but if we can get low and see through his core, I feel like our hands are going to be in position to strike him in the hips rather than up here around his neck area and the shoulder area. Are there any questions so far? Uh, yes, we've Good. got one. All right, um, deal. Do you use divider rules for inside or outside alignment on the wide, wide receiver in cover one? Um, yes and no. So, again, if I've got somebody in the middle of the field that's closing that post, um, you know, we'll, we'll use different types of, of leverage. I honestly, in cover one, I like to be head up because we're going to show a lot of cover two and cover four out of a head up alignment, right? So we don't want to give anything away. And the way we feel like we can do that is switch up leverage. So I can go half man inside, I can go head up, I can go half man outside and really mess with that wide receiver as well as the quarterback if he's paying attention to the leverage. So a uh, good question, but we'll, we'll mix it up quite a bit, especially when I've got somebody that I know, you know, my number one priority, unless I'm in zero, which is all of one, cover zero, I want, you know, nobody's going to be closing the post and I want everybody locked up across the board. But if I've got somebody closing the post, whether it's two man, whether it's too high up there, and each side has, you know, has a guy that's helping out over the top as a safety, or it's one high, and we've got somebody in the post right now, I'm going to switch up leverage as much as I can just to try to play, try to play mind games. Does that answer your question, Coach? Yes, we've got a second one. Um, so uh, that meant to, you, uh, to your answer, that meant that you disguise first and slide by snap to the leverage side? Yeah. Yes, that is correct. That'll be a post-snap slide. Um, so, again, you want to leverage yourself pre-snap so that you can get to where you need to get based on his release. Now, if you're going to take away, like, all of one, if we're playing cover zero, we're going to play a full man inside. So, if he's lined up, head up, I'm actually going to stem pre-snap and move into a position of half man, right? I don't think I can get from a full man all the way inside leverage and cover zero and force an outside release. And now I'm going to you know, give up a slant or something along those lines. And depending on the down and distance, that's the last thing you want to give up. So they got to be smart football players. And a lot of that just comes with reps. You know, I don't want to coach robots. So what I tell my guys all the time is, you know, you do you. Uh, but make sure that you understand what coverage we're in, number one. And number two, that you have the proper leverage post-snap so that we can eliminate what we need to eliminate based on our coverage. Yeah. Great. Thank you, Coach.
Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. So moving on, here's that, that's that pure step in a drill format. We call this just a pure step and you'll see the plant in the right foot here on the sideline. And then hopefully it's not too choppy for you guys. I apologize if it is, but you're going to take just short steps with that inside foot. You can just see them stabbing the inside foot. And then it's a weight management thing as well. So what we want to do is make sure all of our weight is on that back foot and then we explode to where we're going. So we'll, we'll, we'll do this a couple of times and then bring them back with the left foot on the uh, hash coming back to the sideline. Show you guys that real fast. And you may be able to see the concept. There it is. Those are little short stabs, right? So just teaching them that patient step. And again, you don't want to step forward and you also don't want to step back. This is an inch back technique. This is a, you know, pure hands on mindset right now. And then what we'll do is we'll actually chase the hip, right? So right now in the man to man coverage concepts, we are reading this hip. So a lot of times what we're finding nowadays is back shoulder throws. You know, the comeback is a difficult man to man uh, coverage concept to cover. And so if we're staring, you can see he's got his hand on that hip right there. If we're staring through that hip, we feel like when his hips sink, then my hips will sink. And you'll see that in this drill here, right? So he's gonna take a couple of steps. And he's gonna chop up a little bit. So right now I'm just reading the hips. As he comes back, we're gonna switch. And all we're doing is reading that inside hip. So you can see right here, we're just staring through the hip as our hand is on it, right? So I don't want my hand up here in his shoulder area. I wanna keep my hand low to drive him where I want him to go. Does that make sense to you guys? Any questions on that? And then I'm going to show you uh, where actually read the hip where he's throttling down. Yes, we've got one question. Um, the coach is asking, this is like kickstep technique. The Seahawks used a lot. Be patient and slide out to the release. Is that right? That's exactly right. In fact, that pure step was actually from Pete Carroll uh, that the Seahawks used. So, um, you know, they actually turned it into their tackling stuff too with that near hip rugby style tackling the hawk tackle concept. Mm -hmm. Very similar stuff. So everything we do, we want to track the hip. I'm a big believer in that. I was just talking with uh, Derek Jones, who's the new corner or uh, secondary coach at the at Texas Tech University. He was at Duke University before, and that's something that he was very adamant about as well. Is just really reading the hips, because again, if you start reading shoulders and getting too high, you're going to lose leverage on a lot of things. So whether it's tackling, whether it's man to man coverage, whether it's zone coverage. You know, there's a lot of different things. Block destruction is what I talked about with some of the Australian coaches. Even with block destruction, if the lower I get, the more I'm going to attack that guy's leverage. And if I'm attacking his leverage, then he's unable to move the way he wants to. So that's a great question. And you're exactly right, Coach. It's exactly like the Seahawks have taught. Okay, great. So now you can see him throttle down, right? And so what we want to do is just, again, hold that hip and sink with him. So you can see we just chop our feet with him, right? So if you're thinking, you know, in the man concepts, it would be an out route or a comeback route. Whenever he gets to the top of his route and he's getting ready to break, you won't find it as much on the post routes because that's a go route, so to speak. And he's just going to plant that outside foot and go. And now we're in a trail technique and just playing his under hip. But right now we're looking for anything that would break away from us. And we just want to throttle down with him. Right, so it's a very good man technique, and you can see right there where as he holds that hip, it also helps him sink his feet with the way that the receiver is sunk in his route concept. So just a little thing that I think is really good, and it gets those guys trained to think about, number one, staring through the hip, because everything we do, we want to play through the hip. And then number two, sinking our feet to his feet, right? When he sinks, we sink, that type of thing, and then we can make those breaks quicker and more efficiently. Does that answer, uh, we good there with all the drills and stuff? Yes, just one question. Um, the drills you showed us, um, are sure. there the uh, drill, pro uh, drill progression you used for the kick step? Oh. So, so with that in mind, what we're going to do is, is, you know, we're going to have feet underneath our hips. Um, that's where we're going to get the most power. And then from that, with that progression step, we just want to make sure that our weight is managed properly. So go back to the leverage point. If we're inside leverage, then we're going to stick our inside foot. If we're head up leverage, then we're going to stick our outside foot because we have to work inside. And if we're outside leverage, then obviously we're funneling that guy back to the safety. So if we're funneling him back to the safety, I'm actually just going to take a slight inside step. So my leverage is going to be on my outside step right now, right? Um, so again, if we're all of one, 
we want to make sure that we step to get leverage on that hip. And I, it can't be too much of a step. So our progression is just going to be toe to toe is what we're going to teach you for full man inside. If we're head up, then I want to go half man inside, if that makes sense to you guys. And then if we're outside leverage, I want to go half, half a man to, again, funnel him to the inside, but make sure we get a shot on him. Because everything that we do, we want to get hands on those guys. We just feel like that if any free release, there's no reason for us to press anymore, right? So this is all man concepts and stuff that we're, we're going to teach out of our zone mindset. And even with that, with that outside leverage look, it's still the same progression as you would be if you were inside. We're just going to step inside so that we can get our hands on that guy right now. And then we may even zone turn, even though it's a man-to-man -man concept, we may zone turn initially. Because we're going to play what we call a high hip to low hip. It's a trail technique that everybody teaches. But we're going to trail from the high hip. So in other words, if he's running a glance out of an RPO or a slant or anything that's like push vertical, but we have help in the inside, we can play his high hip with the zone turn and it still be man-to-man -man coverage and it messes up with that quarterback's read and progressions. That answer the question? Yes. Oh. Great. Uh, do you want to continue or um, do we have time for another question? They have popped one up. I'll answer any, any questions before we move on, Coach, if that's okay, good great. with you. Yeah, we, we have one. Um, the coach is asking, uh, on an inside release, do you punch with the outside hand? Um, we do it and it helps to protect the inside, especially in cover one. I'm sorry, you cut out on me just a little bit there. Okay. Um, he asked, uh, on an inside release by the wide receiver, do you punch with the outside hand? Gotcha. Yeah, in, in cover one, good question. So what we want to try to do with an inside release with from, from cover one, again, we've got that post safety in the middle of the field. So if we have a poacher, we will, we will punch with whichever hand we can get the most leverage on. So, again, as I mentioned earlier, I don't want to teach robots. I'm not really going to tell those guys to punch with one hand or the other. In cover one, if we're going to line up head up and he releases inside, I still want to push him to the outside because I think I'm slowing him down more, right? If he wants to push inside and I punch with my inside hand, that's where the leverage is. If he's releasing outside, now I'm going to punch with the outside hand Again, that's where the leverage is. And then I'll just man turn or zone turn based on the call, right? So I, I really don't want to teach something where we must do this in this coverage because it can always change. I want the most leverage. So I'm going to leave that to the kid. Um, now, some can do better than others, and there may be others that I, I will tell you, hey, look, you got to punch with the inside hand always or the outside hand or whatever the case is as we funnel and then we'll work trail technique. But I really want those kids from day one to understand that I trust them, right? If I trust them, then they can do what they need to do to make sure that we slow that receiver down as much as possible because the slower he is, then the faster we are. So I really don't want to, to harp on that as much. Some coaches might um, because I want to – but that's something that I'm just adamant about. I want him to feel trusted by me, and, uh, and that's something that we're going to work. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Good deal. So here's a two-man route. So, again, this will be an outside release that you see, but he's, he's playing off now, right? So, again, going back to what we run, right? So this is what we call an off-concept press bail, right? So as he bails out, he's locked back right into that man-to-man. -man. So it's a man-to-man -man turn, you see. As we lock back into that receiver, what I want you to notice here is, again, eye progression, right? So I don't want to get up here in the hips – or, excuse me, in the shoulders – I want to stare down in the hips. Now, he grabs that shoulder late, and I'm correcting him right now. You know, I want that hip driven because I feel like if he drives his hip, he's only going to drive him one place with that release. At least a receiver right now is going to be vertical, and they're trying to beat us deep. Well, if I widen that deep route out here to the ticks, to the, to the sideline, then that's a further throw from this guy, right? So, again, this is a safety over the top that we're not working anything but a one-to-one. -one. It's kind of more of a – of a bracket concept with a with a man to man look, but one thing that we want want to do is again stare back through the hip and if, even in off coverage and then he reaches up too late to go there. I want to go down on the hip, stay low, stay low on the hip and not mess with the shoulder. Switch it up here. Next guy gets his rep, and so again he's now funneling right. So that funnel concept is what we talked about a minute ago. 
you see him shuffle out, right, turn towards his own look. That's still a man-to-man -man look that we're going to mess around differently. Safety's a little slow getting out. He's got to get out quicker. But you guys can see the difference in the turns, but yet it's still man-to-man. -man. And the reason why it's man, this is actually a man-on-demand concept, right? But you'll notice where he's squeezing him to the sideline right there. All that is is just focusing in on that hip. Is being the he looks back like a zone turn. It's still a man-to-man -man look because of the vertical push. So that's where we disguise our coverages. So it looks like if you guys have seen my press palm stuff, it can look like press palms, it can look like quarters, or it's true mod concept right here, man-to-man. -man. And it's really, a, it's a two read, but it turns into a man with vertical routes, right? So that's another thing that we can do a little differently just to, just to mix it up. So here's some film. Again, like I said, the uh, Sugar Bowl last year, uh, Baylor did a really, really good job uh, mixing coverages last year. I felt like out of their three high and three, three stack look, um, they ran some man to man in this, in this Sugar Bowl. And, then, you know, some of these plays are run plays, but I just kind of wanted you guys to see technique, um, see the way that we teach it and, uh, and then, you know, roll from there. So we'll start from the top. You know, one of the things like to the field here, this young man here kind of gets late on his on his that read step, right? That pure step is late. You'll see his feet a little bit in mud here, and we don't want that, right? We want hot feet right off the bat. You see how he's slow to get his feet out and get them hot. So that as I pure step, he wants to pure step a little bit to the outside. And even though he's keeping a full man inside leverage, I've got to get my feet hot. So you'll see, again, there's a comeback route, but I feel like he's he's pretty much a step slow early on because of that. Right, so down here to the boundary again. This is a little bit of a what we call a banjo look. So you can see they're all of one. They're going to run an inside route with their two receivers out there, and then try to hit the flat. Work. The guy's working over the top. The main thing here is we're going to work that trail technique from from a condensed set. Right, so to the boundary, there everything is in here tight. As these guys shoot inside right now, you know this guy's just making sure he's keeping outside leverage because they're worried about that corner route that a lot of us worry about. But as they run double slants, I'm just going to jump on that high hip. I'm going to jump on that high hip right now and then ride with him, right? And then this guy will work the top of the back who hits up into the flat. So, again, this is a big leverage deal here because it's tough to get inside leverage when they're condensed the way they are. So now you just work high to, what I call high to low, all right? And then as he gets, he gets too far over the top, the guy down here to the boundary, the guy that catches the ball, you can see that high to low, he gets way too far over the top right here. And then he sticks the foot, makes a nice little route. The other guy sees it, even though they're in man-to-man -man coverage, he sees it and comes off and makes the tackle. But again, he just had, he out leveraged himself a little bit there. He's working good on the high hip once the guy cuts inside and then he loses himself a little bit late, right? You see right there, kind of lost himself. And then that dude jumps right back out of the out of the route. But you gotta you gotta settle in on that high hip. So again, if you're out of leverage, that high hip is a huge teaching point for young people because what they want to do is they want to try to undercut everything, get up under here. But if he plays right here on this high hip, as soon as that dude sticks his foot and works back here, now he's working right back to him and now he's covered. Right. So if you're gonna play outside leverage, that's a big teaching point in my opinion, is play high to low. That high hip is the hip that's upfield, and then work your way, you slip it underneath the low hip once the ball is released. Any questions on that, Coach? Nope. Um we've got we've got some problems with the film. Sometimes it's a little bit choppy. But Yeah, I apologize, man. I hate that. Yeah, so here we are in a three by one set. Um and now, now my guys will run a lot of a lot of solo to back down here to the boundary uh, with the way we play this, and a lot of this will be cover three type stuff. Um, you know, Baylor mixed it up, so right here they're actually bracketing, I believe. Let me see here. Yeah, it's trying to coach, so I apologize. Okay. So down here to the boundary, here's that inch back technique that I was talking about earlier. This guy does a pretty good job. So he's got half a man leverage. So you can see, you know, what we want to do with the half man leverage is we want to take our two feet and split that front foot. If I split that front foot, then I'm good with half a man leverage. 
and now my pure step has to be inside because I've got the extra defender over here on the sideline, right? So as he does that, you'll see here, this is a little back shoulder comeback throw. The important thing is, as he's inching back, that he works himself into that leverage point. That leverage point is going to be forced everything to the outside. And he does a really good job here with this technique, and he gets his feet hot early enough to where it's not an issue, right? Roll it here. You can see he even steps a little bit later. That's a really good job jumping inside right there. That's a tight window for that quarterback to fit into just because he is, you know, again, on that inch back technique, it's not a bell like you saw a second ago with the drill. You want to try to keep as much, you know, tight as, as you can to that receiver. You want to keep as much of that grass diminished as possible. It's a really good technique right there by that corner. See what they're doing up top here just to see some technique. Yeah, see, we're full man inside up here to the field. Again, he's a little slow in getting his feet moved, but he releases outside, so good. I would just like to see a little bit hotter feet, even if he keeps himself in, in position there. Just it's really tough to come out of your break when you're dead feet, right? You want to get your feet hot, and that way you jab and go right now. And I think that's important in man-to-man -man coverage is that if you get your feet hot right now, you're going to know when to go rather than, oh, shoot, now he's releasing outside and my feet are dead. That's just a, that's a really big coaching point, I think, for the young bucks especially because they're going to want to try to move as they can, but if they can't do that from dead. You still with me, man? Yes, we are. Okay, good. Just want to make sure I didn't lose you. Mm -hmm. So down here on the goal, and this is where you're going to find man-to-man -man coverage the majority of the time. You know, a lot of times now with all the match stuff, um, you know, you're going to find different coverages throughout the uh, <clears throat> throughout the field and throughout the drive. But down here, you almost have to go straight zero a lot of times just because of the timing and how quickly it all happens. You know, here you're going to find Baylor to the field is playing off. Um, but still in a man concept, there's good hot feet, and then he's able to drive, and now you just got to make better leverage on the tackle. So go back to that question about the Seahawks earlier. This is what Seattle did a really good job with when they were making their run. So you can see he's staring right through the hip, just like we want. As he stabs that foot, now we want to work what we call a scooch technique. Uh, Coach, I think you and I were texting about this um, as we were preparing for this talk. The scooch technique, you don't see it from the Baylor guy here, but it's really important. So as he's coming out of his stab right now, I've got to take my foot that's closest to his near hip, and I want to just step replace, and it's almost, it's almost like a backwards shuffle, if that makes sense. It's forward, obviously. But, you know, shuffle I think of is going backwards. But you're going to shuffle towards that near hip right now so that what happens doesn't happen. You'll see he comes, out of, he comes down, but he's out of control, right? Right here, he's out of control. So if he takes that near hip, even right now, he's not terrible. If he take his left hip and, and aim it right there to his near hip and put that shoulder right into him, then we make a tackle for loss or, or, or minimal gain, right? But instead, he's running out of control. He's not able to make the tackle, and it's only a four-yard gain. But again, in man to man coverage, I think if you can teach both of those concepts, it's going to help with your tackling as well, right? So it's it, man to man is a lot like tackling in open field, um, and in the Big Twelve, which is obviously what the Baylor you know what Baylor is in, see it week in and week out. People struggle with tackling because they don't work on it enough. They struggle with man, -man concepts because they don't work on it enough. In high school, it's a struggle because it's not worked on enough. Um, but again, I think that's a mentality. And now you come on. It's not necessarily breakdown, but you. Could, Excuse me, you come under control as you decrease the space between you and the ball carrier. I think that's really important in both man tackling, and you see it right there in that clip. Um, coach, we have got one question to be on the scooch technique. Uh, coach, yes. ask uh, on scooch technique, you teach them to be in, in a half turn, basketball shuffle. Um, this. Very similar to a 
basketball shuffle. So if you think about off the off the you know ball coverage or or defense in basketball, you know when you're one one pass away and you got one hand in denial, and what we used to call it is retreat and approach, right? So we used to do a drill where that front foot would be forward, you would get the hand in the passing lane, so the ball would be kind of over your shoulder, so to speak. And all you're doing is just, if you can see my hands, you're just step replacing. You know, it's like six inch step here and you're replacing on the back foot with six inch step. Um, something that we've been working on, you know, just this morning I was telling kids about, you know, when you take a step with that front foot, that back foot has to mirror the size of the step. If you don't want a hill click, which we don't want to do, we want to hit the ground as much as possible. So yeah, it is very similar to a basketball shuffle. Again, think off the ball defense when you're in denial position. And all you're doing is you're going to come up forward and then you can retreat backwards. But as you scooch forward, the thing that you're trying to do is aim for that near hip. Again, going back, back to that point of reference I said earlier, everything has to be involved in the hips. If we're involved in the hips, then their hips are going to take them where they're going, right? They can shake their shoulders. They can shake their head, but their hips are going to tell you where they're going. So that's a great question. And I think it's a really important thing to rep and, and you know, do it, do it with – with everything that you do in mind, right? So tackling, man coverage, even in zone concepts, you know, if you're working those, those, those hip techniques and you're working the shuffle out, you can work, turn that into a scooch real quick. So teach the shuffle and the scooch exactly the same. The difference is in a shuffle, you are horizontal and in the scooch, you're vertical. So you wanna keep your, your hips square in the scooch, you can turn your hips in the shuffle does that make sense to you guys so that's something I think in, in our game especially with as much as as everybody has to play in space very similar to this this picture right here you know this guy's got to come up and make a play in a space and, and he didn't do a great job of that up in that and really rep that and be better off sorry my film is loading here and it's acting up but okay you, but um uh... Maybe we can we can shoot in another question. Um, Go ahead. What kind of keys do you teach your uh, your player when you use the scooch technique? When to get out of the scooch into the break? You watch the hip and the 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 level of the hip. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. Everything we do, we want to aim at that level of the hip. So as we're aiming towards that, right? So if we're, if we're gonna, we can scooch backwards or forwards, right? So you get your, you get your leverage and then whichever foot is forward, you know, you wanna push off of that foot, right? So your weight management is very, very important. If you push off that front foot, right? You wanna be able to, if that guy cuts inside of you and crosses face, as I'm scooching backwards, I'm gonna be able to switch right now and then scooch, scooch the other way. So think again, basketball concepts, you know, when you're, playing on the ball, man-to-man -man defense, you've got to be able to, to have hip fluidity and move either way. It's the same thing with the scooch. If I'm scooching forward, I got to be able to change directions in a heartbeat. But I think it's really good because you're not going to get crossed up. You're not going to heel click as much because it just doesn't make a whole lot of sense for an athlete to heel click as they keep, their, keep everything square. Whereas, like I said, with the shuffle, if you turn your hips and you lock your hips, it's easier to heel click for whatever reason, I just, I don't, I don't really know why. It's just more natural for a kid to take more steps as he's moving forward from a squared stance, right? So that's important that you rep that, I think. Um, but yeah, it's, everything is going to be aimed at the hip, coach. Like you said, it's, it's important to do that. Okay, great. Thank you. Yeah, good question. And you can see here that the young man there is just, you know, he's coming down and he's playing with, with great, great intensity. He's just out of position. You know, and if he scooches that, he tackles that guy on the on the ten yard line, maybe eleven, and saves his team some four yard, you know, four yards of, of yardage, right? So, the deal again here goal line. So again, this is a run play, but he does a better job of getting his feet hot right here. You can see he's not going to inch back; he's going to inch back just a tad, but. There's the page almost steps forward, all right, but that's a pretty good job right there. Again, just look, looking at the technique. That's what we're looking for. Um, and again, not to step too far forward. You can see that that left foot almost steps across the line of scrimmage. He's got to slow, slow that a little bit. But that's a good job of attacking that hip. You know, if they try to throw that back shoulder, he's playing that high to low that I was talking about earlier. He wants to get on his high hip 
And then if that ball's thrown out there, we can slip it and play the low hip with the inside hand, just like, as I was mentioning earlier, just like the basketball's concept. Go on to the next play here. So, so again, here's a bad rep, right? So <clears throat> this guy up top to the boundary, dead feet. And you can see that the thing that I tell my guys all the time, and I think this is the point in man-to-man -man defense, you must pure step before he does. You can see right here, if he pure steps and then you react to that, everything we do defensively is, is reactionary. But if we can start the concept first, it's easier to react. So, again, going back to what I was saying earlier, it's tougher to react from your feet dead than it is when your feet are hot. So you got to hot your feet before he does. And that's really difficult because he's got an advantage by looking in towards the football right now. And all I'm doing is staring through his hips, right? But I've got to hot my feet quicker than he does here. And the reason why this, this, this ball is caught is because his feet are way late. Sorry, it's choppy. His feet are way late. He's got to hot his feet earlier and get in position right now. You can see he's being reactionary, and the guy gets him on a little shake right there. Boom, that little move inside because his feet are dead. And that's all the, that's all the move at the beginning of the line. And all that took was a little movement from the, from the cornerback to, again, get his feet hot earlier. And he's not in terrible position, but that's a pretty good throw, too, by Fromm. Jake Fromm is a pretty good quarterback. But, again, I think it's important, again, as we were talking about earlier, slow his route progression. If he slows his route progression here, that ball is much tougher to throw. There's your back shoulder. We get beat on a lot of that. That's why a lot of cover zero right there is a cover zero beater, is a back shoulder throw. Um, but I think it all begins in the beginning where you get your feet hot early on. Here we go again, a little two-by-two two look. You got a catch concept down low. They're going to work trail up here. So here's that cover one mindset, right? So you got a poacher in the middle. You got a safety in the middle, chasing out wide there. And then they just work. That's a pretty good concept there by the offense. Running the wheel, and then he just sits down right here in the glance. And so that's a – that's one of those beaters. If you're going to switch it, they don't switch it, but he gets caught up over the top. So right there on that, on that look, what we're looking for right now is two things. What I would do in a man to man, I'm going to talk scheme just for a second over technique, but I think you need to banjo or, or switch anything with this tight of a split, particularly to the boundary. Cause what these guys are going to want to do is come in here and sit. He may clear out, you know, that they're running that wheel concept right there. Well, that sit guy, can easily be covered by him or him. And you see in this picture, what Baylor tries to do is chase and then come over the top of that with their backer. I think the corner should take the, that wheel route, just banjo it and let this guy leverage it inside. This is a very difficult play right here, even in cover one. Because if you've got cover one over the top, you're gonna have low hole players. So have one of these guys just play low hole and then you just call it pre-snap. You know, what we call it is gang, gang, gang. So gang would say, hey, we're going to switch these two because of their split being so close. I'm worried about this and that, right? Or I'm worried about him clearing out and that guy going there, which is what you see in this picture. So I think it's important that you also switch things up um, because these are man beaters that, that are really difficult to cover. So he's over the top of that, and that guy's wide open. Easy first down. That's not really a technique thing, but that was something I wanted to point out because I think it's important that we as coaches see that that's just something you got to switch. Too difficult to to play man to man on something like that, especially on a short yardage situation. I think it's second and short. I, I would definitely switch that up. Any questions there? Yes. Uh, when you play uh, banjo, which guy makes a call in your system? Good question. Safeties is going to be my quarterback, right? So, in this particular picture, it would probably be this guy. Um, he's probably a scrolled safety, I would imagine. I can't see his number in this particular look here. But if, if he feels like he can't get over the top of anything there, he needs to call it. If he feels like he's going to get picked, then I'm okay with him calling it too. So kind of going back, as long as they communicate and they're on the same page, what I require is them guys, those guys to use both hand signals and as well as verbal signals. And we talked about that early on 
mentioned here, uh, my new stop in Huddle is like, you know, if we're all wrong, we're all right. And, and that's okay. And so if these guys choose a coverage and they're on the same page, nobody's hurt. If this guy's in one coverage and this guy's in another, that's where you get yourself hurt. So um, usually it's going to be safety first that'll call it, but I'm okay with this corner saying, hey, guys, I don't think I can – I feel like I'm about to get picked. I, don't, I can't make it down here and get inside on that sitter. Then we'll, we'll go ahead and make – and it's got to be pre-snap. It can't be post-snap. That happens too fast, especially in this league uh, at this level. With, you know, power five football, it happens way too fast, but it happens too fast in high school in Texas as well. You've got to make it pre-snap, and once we make the call pre-snap, we're going to live in it and make the play. Good question. Okay, uh, you, you talked about the uh, catch, about, about catch, uh, the catch concept on the uh, on the field side. There is is it uh, is catch played with the scooch technique? So we have got the concept catch and the technique. The DB is yeah. No, so yeah, that is the scooch technique right there. So good find there. So some coaches will, will teach it differently, but I, I like that scooch technique, and I think he does a great job. And you can see it right there, those step replace right there, what that kid does, he keeps his leverage. So I, to, if you're asking me my opinion, yes, I think you do need to play. And you can see here he's given, not gaining. So if you're playing off, you can gain. If you're playing catch, you can give, right? So there's a difference in the, in the two. But if this guy were scooching forward, if he were to play off, let's say six by one leverage, and he wants to scooch inside towards that. No big deal. It's the same same footwork. You're just moving for instead of backwards. So your weight management changes a little bit. But that's a great find, and you're exactly right. I think I think that technique right there is exactly the way you want to play from about a three yard catch tech or a three yard catch alignment. Mm -hmm. um, you know, again up here at the top, you know, it's kind of similar similar boat. But again, as soon as he gets an inside release. Now we can drop and look like a cover three because cover one and cover three are very similar, right? So if, if he's scooching, if he's scooching right here, that guy goes inside right now. To me, that's a really easy mix up. You can just mix that up and, and you're good to go. But yeah, good question down there. I think you do use scooch technique from a catch concept for sure. Okay, great. Yeah, again, some, uh, some goal line play here. The reason I pointed this one out and wanted to put this clip in here, I'm not really sure what's going on here, right? So we just talked about leverage earlier and uh, and the guy that asked about the – I guess we lost you, Coach. Okay, wir haben Coach Harvey verloren für den Augenblick. Sorry, guys. Can you hear me? Uh, yes. Sorry, got, got the boot, got the old boot, kicked me out. My apologies. All right. Do I need to? I need to let you re, uh, start recording, or is, oh, it's recording. We're good. Yeah, it's. I think it's recording, and uh, already made you the host, so you can share your screen. I think I'm good. Can you see my screen now? Yes, we can see it. Awesome. Sorry about that. Okay, so I'm not really sure what Baylor's trying to do here. You'll see this safety. He gets caught up. And this guy is automatically funneling. So going back to the uh, the question earlier with the Seahawks pure step, that's exactly what's happening here. But see how he works outside of that outside leverage. That would say right, right now that this safety is going to help. But he gets up over here on this side, and then they you know they're running the corner route. But you got to be very careful. I think there's too much cushion given here, especially down here in the goal line. So one of the teaching points that I like to give my guys anywhere inside that red zone, inside the 20 yard line. If you're going to work outside leverage, and I mentioned it earlier, you got to work half a man. 
So this inside foot needs to be aligned with his outside foot if I'm playing a funnel, right? So you can kind of see this guy work here, but then they run a corner from there. Well, that safety could be involved in both of those because if he runs a corner post and he's playing free, that's an important thing. So this guy almost messes up here and gives it up this leverage. I think they do score on that here in a little bit. Um, but that's one of the things that, that you know, I would really tell – Tell young guys, you know, make sure that your leverage is not too much. He jumps way outside here. You can see he's almost a full yard outside of the man. I don't think there's ever any way in man-to-man -man coverage that you need to be that far outside. So I think it's only going to be half a man. And you can see they luck out, try to throw the corner out, which is incomplete. But got to be careful with that. Um, as far as this coverage, the coverage on the kid that, that was thrown to, that's a pretty good job. So you can see there's your trail technique, right? So a lot of coaches talk about being out of phase. It actually uses that term much. Um, I don't really like it, to be honest with you, because we're always in phase. But you can see here, there's a lot of collisioning going on. That throws off the timing of that route. Well, this guy ends up getting loose, and now I'm in, in trail technique. So I'm going to roll it forward here. That right there. Notice what what that guy is staring at is that hip. He is working his way back to the hip. So we tell kids to play with relentless effort all the time. Right now, I'm staring through that hip, and my number one priority is to catch his hip. That's it, right? So if I ever do get beat in man-to-man coverage, we want to just to get back on that hip as quickly as we possibly can. Force a perfect throw, right? So. From put a little bit of mustard on that one, could get a perfect throw in and complete pass, lead to play another down. You kind of see it from the from the back end. He's not looking back for the ball. He's just trying to get through the hip, and that's a pretty good job, even though he was almost beat. Uh, Coach, when we can, when we go back to that play, uh, you talked about the cover one and the uh, middle of the field safety. Um, do you coach do you coach him the uh, to reach one side shoulder of the quarterback? Absolutely. Yes. Anytime we're playing free, we're reading the front shoulder of the quarterback. You're just playing the football, be a dude. And so what I don't want him to do is, is fixate himself on one receiver, kind of like he did in that last picture. Mm -hmm. I want him to play through free and read that front shoulder because, you know, front shoulder is going to take you there. Uh, um, majority of the time, hopefully we got a good enough pass rush if he's trying to work through, a, you know, third progression or higher. If we can get him to his third progression because I'm playing good man-to-man -man defense and he's poaching the right way, then I think we've got a pretty good shot of at least flushing him out of the pocket, if not getting a sack or a hurry up. Yeah, good question. So, again, here, here's a good picture of uh, uh, up top. Oh, he, he has to early, almost, almost too early, right? So, he, he's in a – that's not necessarily a – scooch but what he does a good job with is keeping that inside leverage you can see his first step almost forward again that that pure step can be a little bit more lateral but he hots his feet early enough again it's a run play but i think he would be on that if that were a pass play down here to the field his feet are dead right so there's a difference his feet are dead and now the receiver gets even with him right now when he's even he's leaving and that's what we tell guys all the time so don't let him get even but you can't, you cannot get over the top of him with dead feet. You gotta hot your feet. So we've seen a couple times now in the pictures here where that young man is is a little bit slow in getting his feet moving. If you're gonna play man-to-man -man coverage, that's crucial. Dead feet will kill you. So he, that guy almost takes two and a half steps before the before the corner even moves. One, two and a half. We got to get there quicker. Again, back to the goal line, a little motion. All right, come on. All right, so it's a pretty good job down here at the bottom. Oh, I know what I wanted to show here. <clears throat> so you can watch how this corner down here, the bottom of our screen, where he jumps inside right there. And now he's just playing that low hip. He's able to get that passing, that hand in the passing lane. That's a really, really good job jumping 
what we call jumping leverage post snap, right? He jumps the leverage there, feeling like that guy's going to go underneath. And he remembers that he's down low, and this back here is an extra defender right here on the white where that official's standing. So you can see it here from the goal line and uh, the end zone cam. It's a really good job where he jumps inside. And now around, he forces that quarterback to squeeze a ball that's a really difficult throw. And so even though it looks like he may be not necessarily beat, but he's got leverage over the top. Now you see the ball's been thrown, and he's in perfect position to swat it away. Right there, he gets the hand on it, ball up. All right. So that, I mean, if we get hands on balls like that from the low hip, exactly what we want. It's a really good job by that corner. And he all happens to pull a snap there. He, he realizes what the receiver is trying to do, jumps inside right now, gets that hand in the passing lane, and he gets a PBU. PBUs are great place, right? So interceptions are exceptional place, but we'll take PBUs all night long. It's a really good job there. Uh, back to the middle of the field here. There's your bail technique that we saw earlier. All right. Come on. Apologize, Coach. It's really choppy. I didn't know if it was going to be like this. My fault. There we go. Yeah, he's got to drive on it quick. Now, that's a pretty good job. I still would like to see a scooch technique right here. And right? so he loses his feet. You can see where he loses his feet. If he scooches this and take that inside foot, it would be his left foot but and then scooch right into it. I think he's going to come under control a little bit more. He ends up making the tackle in this picture. But that's one of the things, again, if you're going to press bell, he's walking out. So now right about now start your scooch. You have plenty, plenty of cushion, plenty of space to scooch it, and then you can stab that back foot, come down with more, more authority and under control. You can see the scooch from the middle of the field, actually. Here's a, here's a pretty good scooch technique right here. I would, I would rather him be a little bit shorter with his steps. Steps are a little bit wide and long, but you can see the concept right there. And he's way in control right now, where this guy does make the play, but he's not as in control as that guy there in the middle. It's a good picture of the scooch. We'll see it from the, uh, from the end zone, from that middle safety. Again, he can short just a bit. If he shortens up a bit, he's under control a little bit more. That guy's a good football player. When I was watching this film, he, he made a ton of plays. get the idea there. Here we go again. So getting down here. Pure step from the inside. So you see, <coughs> excuse me, going back to what I was saying earlier, he's got inside leverage, but his first step is also inside. So if you take inside leverage and now your first step is inside and he's releasing outside, you're going away from his release and now you've lost leverage. So going back to the question earlier, which hand do you tell him to stab with? I don't want to tell him to stab with a particular hand because I'm not really sure where he's releasing. So if I say, hey, you want to stab from an inside leverage, you want to stab with that inside hand, but he goes outside, I think it's more important that we find leverage and we find leverage with our feet, right? So if he goes outside right now, I got a step here, pure step here. And now if I can shoot my inside hand, I'll shoot it. But if it's my only outside hand is all I got because he releases way out wide, then I'm going to shoot my outside hand. But if I tell that kid, I want you to shoot with the same hand over and over, that can get him in trouble. So that's where you can see in this picture. He steps inside and now there's, there's separation right there. That separation could have gotten him beat if they were throwing the football. It ends up being a run. And, split zone look, so they lucked out. But just little things like that that I think are important where you allow kids to play a little bit as long as they understand leverage is the most important thing in man-to-man -man coverage. And we're, you know, we're going to shoot both hands. Be ready to shoot both hands. we be a robot. And there's a little, little formation to the boundary, right? So they've got that guy on an island up top to the field. With that condensed set, I'm thinking one thing. I'm thinking he's trying to run a fade or a back shoulder. That's really good coverage right there, really good coverage. What I want to see here and point out 
I like what he does. He does not look back to the football. Let me slow it down here in the beginning. I think he starts to speak earlier too. Yeah, about simultaneously, but that's a really good job. Starting his feet early enough, now he realizes that guy's about to get the football. He never looks back. He just stays in his hip. He drives him to the sideline, and then you can see late. He throws that hand up. That's picture-perfect cover zero type stuff right there. He's got a guy inside, but he takes away inside leverage. That guy's probably fit in the run if I were – if I were betting, that that is that it doesn't get any better than that. Hots his feet early, jumps to the inside, stays on the hip, keeps his feet hot, drives him to the sideline, and then throws the the uh, inside hand up late to just cause more distraction. Let's see if we get a good picture here from the end zone. Slow it down. He's on his hip, throws that hand up late. PBU. Really nice play right there. I love internet, guys. <laughs> here we go. All right, so now there's a blitz action going on here. So this is actually a split coverage concept. One of the things that, <clears throat> that I think is important when you're blitzing is to understand, you know, your, your leverage points, right? So they're playing cover zero down here to the bottom, and they're playing a cover three look up top. So if you look here to the boundary, again, he knows his leverage and he knows the ball's coming out hot. What I like what he does here, good job of hot in his feet. But he takes a peek inside. You can see right there what's happening. And now he knows that he can get back and, and man turn late. So that's a technique that I think is really good and a good shifting movement that we can do in our match concepts. So if you're in man, you know, a lot of guys ask me all the time, how do you tell the difference between match zone and match man? Well, who's looking at the ball and who's looking at man? Well, here he kind of mixes up momentarily. He'll look in at the ball, and if he catches eye contact with that quarterback, all of a sudden that quarterback thinks that he's in zone, and then he's back in the man. That quarterback makes a really good throw, ends up being a first down. But that, sometimes you just got to take your hat off. It's good coverage. He hots his feet early, keeps good leverage. That's just a good throw and catch for a first down. Nothing you can do about that, but that's good coverage. I like what he does there. All that young man is doing. For those of you box players, that's a nice little blitz there by the Baylor Bears. I like that. that. You can see they call this an amoeba. All right. Got two two guys slanting hard and then somebody coming off the edge inside. And they, they end up getting caught up. And Georgia picks it up. That's a good blitz. Any questions while we're waiting on this? Love. Um, no questions in the chat right now. Uh, yeah, we got one. Okay, cool. Do you use, do you use and coach um, um, off man coverage? Could you hear the question, coach? Lost him again. Sorry, guys. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Okay, we got you again. Yeah, my apologies. Any any questions? Yes. I, I think it's gonna, it's going to yeah, be choppy in my. Yeah, we we up, have so. one on on uh, off man coverage. Do you use do you use off man coverage? A little 
but not not a ton. I'm I'm a press guy. As you've seen, like you said, you've seen a few of my clinics, and 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 I'm gonna press mostly um, with off man. You know, I think the main thing there is 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 two things. Number one, you always want to close the post because you're gonna you're gonna give up quite a bit of that, in my opinion. There, it's just an easier stem, right? So, if if that receiver has a free release and he's coming straight at my DB, I feel like that we're gonna be put in a really really awkward position if we're playing from off. So I don't, I don't play a whole lot of it. I'm not saying that it's bad. I just don't personally like it unless I'm closing the post. So I will play some some man free with two high safeties as well as cover one out of off. But usually it's going to be a third long situation, maybe a second and long situation. And a lot of times I'll just go to a zone match rather than a man match because it turns into man anyway. I'd rather have them zone eyes so that, as I was asked earlier with that free safety, we're reading the front shoulder of the quarterback. And we're I think we're just allowed to play a lot, a lot faster rather than focusing in on a man. I'd rather find a big brown thing, right? I tell guys all the time, find the football. Um, the sport was named football for a reason. It's the most important thing on the field. So that's just a perf- preference thing. I'm not saying that those guys that work man off are, are bad coaches. That's just something I don't really care for. I'd rather watch the football if I'm going to play from a off position so that I can be more twitchy and, and play ball uh, based on what the ball's doing rather than what a man's doing. Mm-hmm. Okay, great coach. So so we Sorry. talked about press from different alignments. You talked about a little bit about catch technique. We talked about off man coverage. Is there is there anything else you use when you when you uh, think about man coverages? Yeah, not really, man. So like I said earlier, I just want to try to try to marry everything together. So if we can do the same technique in our, in our man-to-man coverage concepts as we do when we're tackling, I think those coincide quite a bit, right? So I think what we're wanting to do really is make sure our footwork is sound. That's the number one thing. Make sure our technique with our footwork is really, really good. And then we're aiming at the hip, not at the shoulders. Those are my two biggest coaching points when teaching man-to-man coverage as well as teaching tackling, right? So If I get up in the shoulder area and I'm working the neck tackle, it becomes an arm tackle and I might as well go, you know, we're in Texas and there's a lot of cattle here. So I might as well go wrestle calves, you know, so I tell them all the time. So play low, play towards the hip. Uh, There's a lot of similarities there, as I mentioned, and and that's really what we're going to focus on and teach that until, you know, the kids are tired of hearing it really until we're tired of saying it, because that's important that we're, we're working and you know again from the ground up I think is really important uh, as you saw in the picture there number 13 really had a hard time with getting his feet hot early enough whereas number three the other corner did a, or excuse me number one I think it was did a really good job and uh and, and played played much better man-to-man coverage when they were in man-to-man that night against uh, Georgia mm-hmm. okay so. great great coach um yes coaches do we have any other questions for coach Harvey I think from my stand, standpoint, you answered a lot of questions and gave us great insight, some great tips um, that we can immediately implement into our into our game over here. So right. we, we are allowed to to practice practice now with 30 players in the group. So we see we see, we will see some some action over here. That's awesome. That's awesome. Well, let's we got to make sure we keep this thing at bay, right? So we can get get ours season underway as well so Mm -hmm. it's good stuff i'm gonna throw my twitter uh information in here in the in the chat you guys reach out to me man anytime uh i'll shoot my email address as well great thank you guys want to email yeah email me or or whatever i've got there's actually more uh than what i've showed here i just pulled out some clips but i've got some press palm stuff cover to read uh that you've seen And if you guys want any of that stuff, shoot me an email. I'm more than happy to send it back over to you guys for sure. Yeah, that's great. We've got one question popping up um, about catch man. How does the lineup change from fields to red zone? Yeah, great question. I'm not going to play a ton of catch in the red zone, uh, but I am going to mainly the, – the only change is going to be I'm going to be a full man inside if I'm going to play catch, whereas if I'm going to play press um, – Then, then I can line up, you know, head up a little bit more. Uh, uh, but I don't want a full man inside if I'm going to play anything off catch or I play off realm personally. I just don't don't care for it. Uh, but that's a good question. I think I 
think main thing is that you keep that solid inside leverage if you're because again they're going to get a free release so what you don't want to do is give them a two-way go you got to take away something and i would be the inside use the outside guy or excuse me use the uh, sideline as an outside defender mm -hmm. yeah that's great coach so just from my point uh, i'd like to thank you very much for your time i appreciate really you're taking your time uh, of the day to help us get better over here and um, i wish you all the best for for this season um let's hope, let's hope that that there will be a season for you guys in the fall and um, i wish you wish you all the best and all the best yeah thank you very much coach thank you absolutely thank you thanks for having me uh again as i mentioned earlier really exciting to see you know, the game growing and, and uh, commend you guys, appreciate you guys. And if you're ever in the, uh, the, the States and particularly Texas, give me a shout for sure. I'd love to, love to uh, chop it up with you guys. And, and uh, I appreciate you having me on for sure. Yeah, that's great, Coach. So uh, I wish you a nice day and hope we can stay into contact after you talk. Absolutely. Reach out anytime, my man. Yeah, thank you. Goodbye. Have All right, nice. take care.